It's a big welcome to uh, Wes Brown. Wes, you're going to show us uh, a couple of the shirts that you wore while playing for Manchester United. Um, and you've also been doing a lot of MUTV group chats, haven't you, during lockdown? Have you been enjoying those group chats? Yeah, they're good, mate. Getting up nice and early um, with the boys, having a good chat with Stu. Um, been good fun. We've had uh, Mr. Motivator on, which was good. <laughs> uh, I keep, everyone keeps saying I was being lazy, but I couldn't get up, um, Sully. Because I didn't have pants on. <laughs> We've been good. Yeah, Raphael as well on um, some other good guests uh, lined up too. Um, it's a it's a nice thing for you to be able to do to speak to our fans and just update everyone with uh, how you're doing and speak a bit about United. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, mate. And obviously we've we've had fans on as well, so that that's important. Uh, and just keeping up to speed with everything. Cool, but this is all about um, a couple of your. Uh, most treasured shirts that you have in your possession. Um, you've got quite a few shirts, actually, in your house, haven't you? You've said to us before, like, your debut one is in there somewhere against Leeds. Um, your debut, I mean, how special a moment is that, making your Man United debut? Yeah, people ask me my favourite game, and that's, that's definitely in the top three. Um, you know, just to build up to it, how quick it was from sort of being YTF uh, to turning pro at 17 and then playing at 18. Um, Crazy day before, with Pally telling me I was playing. Um, <laughs> I was playing, so I didn't sleep. I've told it before, but I didn't sleep the night before. And then obviously the day came and I was sub, but I ended up coming on and had a really good game um, against Leeds. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. So yeah, it was a, a really good, um, really good day for me and a, a day I'll never forget. Yeah, uh, as a Manchester lad, making your debut for United, uh, unbelievable moment. And of course, you went on to make um, 361 appearances, which you, you know, in the top 50 appearance makers for United in history, that's an achievement to be really proud of. Yeah, I mean, it would have been, every every player would tell you this, it would have been great to stay there your whole career. A few of the lads did it. Um, you know, I had a lot of injuries along the way, Stu, as well, some bad ones. But I was lucky, I had um, good people around me, um, good people at the club and the family to support me and managed to come through them. But there was a lot of games missed in that time. I can tell you spending too much time with Stuart in the mornings. You remember you're talking to Sully now, not Stuart. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> uh, you know, it was the, the, when I got injured, mate, it was difficult at times. But, you know, I managed to come back and, and get back in the team. So, you know, I can't really, um, I, would, I wouldn't really change any of my career. OK, to the uh, first of the two shirts you're going to show us. Yeah. It's from the Champions League final against Bayern Munich. It was your first full season in the first team, wasn't it? You made your debut at the end of the 97 98 season. So into that famous treble season, 98 99. And what a shirt to choose. So what was the build-up to that game like? Oh, it was intense. Uh, obviously, I'm a kid. I probably didn't take it all in as, as much as the older lads at the time. Um, but obviously, that season was crazy for me. My first full season. I'm playing in Europe. I played, I played in some of the, the big games, Bayern Munich, Barcelona games, um, at the new camp as well. And I probably didn't take it in as much as I should. I mean, it, it's some of that, you know, if it does get done, it, it probably won't be for a long time, if ever. Um, the, the, obviously, the winning the Premier League FA Cup just before and then getting to the new camp. Um, I mean, we didn't know, I didn't even know it was going to be sub at the time. You know, the, the manager kept it. So, so the, I can't remember if it was the day or the night of the game, but no one really knew. Um, and the squad was unbelievable. So to, to be part of it and be sub was um, something I'll never forget, Stu. Uh, and let's uh, see the shirt, shall we? Let's yeah. have a look at the shirt. Yeah. You've got it there. Here we go. It's all signed, to be fair. I'll show you this. I'll move back. So after the game, most of the lads got the shirt signed. So this this was actually on my wall for a long time, Sully. Um, when I was younger, it's not there anymore. And this is the medal. It probably needs a little clean. <laughs> it's, uh, it's beautiful, a, though. Beautiful. Um, and I don't know if many people know, but I, I wore 30 in Europe that season. Yeah, because you wore 24 in the league. So why was it 30 in Europe? I'm going to blame Albert. I don't know. <laughs> to blame Albert. For some reason, I don't know. I got 20 and I'm, I think it was to do with registration or something. Um, I wasn't down for 24 or 
I couldn't use 24 for some reason. So right. I ended up in um, 30, which was uh, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't really matter what shirt number you have on your back. It's just being there, being part of it all. Um, so you say you were um, on the bench there. What was it like in that dressing room in the build-up to the game? Because a lot of the lads we speak to say they, they were proper nervous for the first time in a game for some of them. That, that group you just weren't nervous. They were so good. But for that game, they were. Yeah, it's such a... You know, I think, um, this, especially the day of the game, it probably clocked in everyone's heads what, what we could have sort of achieved by winning this game. And um, I mean, I was so nervous. I mean, I was only a kid and I wasn't even playing. But if, when I was looking around the, the dressing room, I just remember thinking, look at all these quality players that we have. You know, we've, we've got a great chance. And leading up to the game, obviously playing very well um, against Newcastle, um, you're slightly confident. We were missing some big players, you know, without Keno and Skull. So the team had to change a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was tense. And I think the lads knew what it meant and it maybe got to them a little bit. The atmosphere... For a big game like that, must be incredible to be involved in. What, what was it like to be right in that that cauldron that is the new camp and sensing all that atmosphere? It's my it's my favourite away stadium, um, Sully. And um, I mean, you've been there many times. And when you look up, it just it's it's, it's endless. <laughs> yeah, eyes. Uh, you know, both sets of fans are brilliant, and um, it's something that I'll never forget. And obviously, I, I was lucky enough to play there again afterwards. So. Um, that 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 was good for myself. Again, when the game started, um, the nerves were probably even more for myself because we didn't start too well, uh, and we knew it was going to be a long game. But ultimately, we knew the mentality of the lads was was probably the best I've ever seen in any team. And there you are, sat on the bench watching the game. Do you, do you wear the shirt while you're sat on the bench? That shirt, or do you put it on if you were going to come on? I always have mine on, chin pads on, ready to go. Yeah, that's the way. That's how it should be. Be ready to go. Bit of old school, yeah. But I have, I have everything ready to go. Um, it wasn't really a case. Obviously, you, you warmed up, and I suppose more the second half. The only reason I was coming on was probably if there was an injury, maybe, maybe two injuries in the defence, uh, maybe, or you know, we wanted to maybe throw if we were winning the game and throw a defender on. So I didn't really think I'd get on, uh, yeah. just because of the occasion of the game. Um, you know, why change defenders if we're doing well? Um, and if we were getting beat like we were at the time, if anything, you throw the, the strikers on. But I was still nervous, um, just knowing that at any time, I could have been one of seven, um, obviously, the, the manager picking out for the one. And then, of course, you sat on the bench. You've got the best seat in the house to watch that crazy uh, last few minutes. What was it like... Uh... Uh, from your position watching it? Yeah, well, the first one goes in, Stu. And it's... it's I keep calling you Stu, Sully. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've told you, you spend too much time with Stuart in the mornings at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, Sully, mate. I know. Uh, the first one goes in and I swear it's mental. It's absolutely mental. And we didn't sit back down. It's like everything, the roles reversed. You know, even on the benches and their team, you could see their players. They just couldn't believe it. They were so close. Um, not much time left and then we go and score and then honestly I don't think anyone felt that we would ever lose that match once we scored the first goal Yeah, unbelievable scenes um, At the end of the game did you not consider swapping shirts with a Bayern player or were you happy just to keep no. your United shirt? Yeah, I didn't really swap shirts uh, to be fair but no, I wasn't even thinking about that it was more celebrate on the, on the pitch you know that was a a first experience for me as well, and and then obviously getting back in the in the changing room, which I've actually seen some footage of recently on MUTV, uh, and it was it was quality. You know, everyone was so happy, and again, it, it didn't take me a while to realise what what the actual treble meant. Yeah, unbelievable achievement. Um, moving on now to two thousand and eight. And show us your next shirt then. So there's a bit of a combination here, isn't there? Explain the combination you've got going on. Uh, the next shirt is, well, I couldn't find me a weight Champions League shirt. So <laughs> I brought the medal. This one's a lot cleaner, as you can see. Yeah, again, but, it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, remember the game we played um, against Man City where we changed the kits? 
I was wearing number two at the time. Uh, you know, that, that this game meant a lot to me, you know, obviously coming from Manchester and, and what it meant. Uh, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't actually win the game, but, you know, getting permission to change the shirt for this special occasion was, was one I'll never forget. Yeah, it is, it's a fantastic looking shirt as well. And you're right, for what it signifies, it quite rightly sits amongst your proudest uh, collections that. Um, for the final against Chelsea in the Champions League, uh, from which we've just seen your medal, I hope you've not lost that shirt, by the way, because that's, that's going to be somewhere in the house, right? You know what, there we go, put it on. Um, yeah, that shirt's got to be somewhere in your house. Oh, 100%, it's definitely, yeah. It's, it's three suitcases, Stu, and I found one. <laughs> Again, oh my God! <laughs> we'll let you off. We'll let you off. Uh, okay, to that, to that game against Chelsea. Then, um, in that season, you played more games than you had in any other season for United. It was your most um, prolific season, forty-seven appearances, mostly at right back. So, how yeah. happy were you with that season in general? Yeah, it was good because I didn't get injured. Uh, you know, but I think um, the, the team that the manager built leading up to it, maybe the year, two years before, you could see a team coming on with um, brilliant players. I mean, world-class players all over the pitch. And I think that season, um, you know, the mentality that we had, we, 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 were, we were telling each other, we want, to, we want to win it this year. You know, we were disappointed to go out the FA Cup, but we want to try and win everything. With the sort of standard we have in the team, we, we've got to be up there. We've got to be nearly there for a shout. And obviously, when the season carry, carries on and gets closer to the close, um, close the season, you know you're up there, you're in the, the biggest games. And then it's just, you know, producing on the night, um, Sully, and we did that. And that, that, um, that Chelsea final, I mean, we started unbelievable. I was hoping, you know, maybe 2-0 up we, we could have been. But then, you know, Chelsea were a good, strong, big side, um, Sully, and... They managed to get back in the game and then it was a battle to the end and you have to respect both sides for that. That rivalry was really good throughout the uh, 2000s with Chelsea, wasn't it? Just how intense were those games? Yeah, they were very intense. You know, um, everyone knew everyone. Um, every, everyone knew every other player on the, on the opposite side of the pitch. Um, we knew what the strengths were. Um, they had a brilliant defensive record as well. So, you know, they weren't easy to score past. Um, so you had to be up for it. every play. You couldn't really have a, a be, have a player um, being off the game um, because you get punished for it. And, you know, Mourinho really had a, a good... He started with a, a good, strong team in maybe 2005. Um, and then the backbone w was made from that, obviously getting into the final. You set up Ronnie's goal, didn't you? Ronaldo's goal with a nice left-footed uh, cross uh, from... Uh, surging forward from right back. Uh, your memories of that moment? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it was good. I mean, people always go on about that, and um, it was part of the, the team talking. And being honest, with Essie and, and playing right back, and Ronnie sort of playing a little bit wider to the left with um, with Tevez up front. And we know how good he is in the air. So you know, if there was any opportunity to get the ball in the box. We, we've got we've got to try and do it because he's um, you know it's more than 50-50 Ronnie will win it you know and mm -hmm. he, he uh, a good ball in but I think it was an even better header the way he had to you know guide it into the bottom corner of course it was such a closely um, fought game all the way into extra time um, and then just before the finish uh, you get brought off don't you? because uh, just for the penalty so two things on that um would you have taken a penalty had you been on the pitch? Near the end, 100%. But I was so relieved when I got took off. <laughs> I was so relieved because uh, it was probably, what, 20, 30 seconds before he blew the whistle. Yeah. And it was for Anderson, who I know is very good, confident lad, good at penalties. Um, so looking back, I was very relieved to come off, in, even being honest. But... At the same time, I would have, I would have took one and put it top bin. <laughs> That's your technique, is it? Just <laughs> smash it in the top bin, no problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't take penalties, um, Sully. So um, it was uh, obviously the best thing to do, and it worked for us perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Then the celebrations ensued after 
Uh, we won the penalty shootout. Michael Carrick said to us the other day he'd never been so tired after a game as he was after that one. The mental and physical exhaustion, exhaustion was unbelievable. How did you feel? Yeah, obviously we've extra time as well. Um, and I suppose adrenaline, you know, going into that second half of extra time was difficult. Um, obviously, Jogba getting sent off eased it a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I was probably the fittest I've probably been as well at the time, but that, that was a very tough game, and obviously, straight after the game, um, we got back late, but we did party for a while, um, and if I'm, if I'm correct, I think it was me and Cameras could have been the last ones up, so that's <laughs> um, why he says that. Final question then, uh, which was the better party, 08 or 99? Ninety nine. Why? The party, the party didn't stop, so like, obviously he went all night um, at the hotel. Then we got on the plane, went on the plane. Then obviously we got on the bus and did the parade um, from the airport, Old Trafford, through Manchester, into the nine X at the time, and then you know summer afterwards as well. Um, so it didn't stop for a good two days, maybe three. Brilliant. Me. Yeah, top part. You definitely uh, earned that, that's for sure. Uh, Wes, thanks for doing that for us. Pleasure having you on, as always. Uh, and I hope you find your 08 shirt. Tully, I'll find it and I'll stop calling you Stu as well. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.